Good public space. No, it's not. Why not? We're not here yet. Oh, you're not here yet? <laughs> yeah. And now are we here? No. Do you want us no. to lead you? Yeah. Who, who are you, by the way? Well, I'm Bicycle Warrior. Oh, I have some tools to show you. The things that we use at Free Cycles to fight for bike lanes and clean air. Well, here's one. He's able to turn his passion for creating a different kind of world into non-angry diligence. What do you think we do with a broom? Sweep! We sweep the bike lanes. We get the glass and the thorns and the metal out of the bike lanes. It's like working with a genius that sees things in a completely different way. A tape measure to make sure the bike lanes aren't measured enough. You can just frame it all. It's so positive, even if it's this kind of negative white elephant in the room or something like that. One more thing. The pencil. The pencil. The pink pencil. What do we? Pink pencil. What do you think we do with this? We draw bike lanes. We write notes to. Other people. Yes. yes. Who else? Deer. No. no. <laughs> to the deer. <laughs> to the deer. One of my favorite books is The Alchemist by Paulo Coelho and why is pretty simple. There's a central tenet that if you believe something strong enough or work towards something strong enough, the whole universe will conspire to help you. I think that's pretty true. I found it to be true. <laughs> when I arrived in Missoula, the feeling and seeing the mountains surrounding this community blew me away. I came from North Carolina and Virginia thinking that the West was very pristine, and I think it is compared to a lot of other places. I thought you could drink the water right out of the river, I thought the forest would be intact and that everything was just beautiful and in harmony. To see clear cuts in Washington blew me away and I wanted to go back to school, complement a business degree with something more like resource conservation and that sort of led me on a path to help wildlands become healthier but it also to me made me think a lot about cities and urban areas and community as the heart of making things better or it can make things worse. Well, it really didn't dawn on me that a community bike shop would be um, beneficial. Um,
because yeah, Missoula is so small and the bicycle network, we all take the same routes and stuff. So I'm on the trail, a very similar experience. I'm on the trail and I like see Bob's red hat and his chewed up by the squirrel panniers or whatever. <laughs> I just like see him stop and he like bends down. He's sweeping up broken glass. And I'm like, oh my gosh, he's the nicest fellow ever. <laughs> and it's just like most people just bike right by that or whatever. And he was just doing his civic duty and keeping the trail smooth. And I, ta I was like, oh, Bob, do you like always do this? And he's like, well, in a way, it, it re relates back to free cycles because now we don't have to help someone fix their flat. <laughs> and so I'm, <laughs> this is my work. And I'm like, yeah, you're totally right. And Missoula has done two so-called road diets. West Broadway from Orange to California Street in 2005 went from a four-lane road for motor vehicles to a three-lane road. And that's the diagram on one side of your street. A huge reason was five pedestrians crossing that stretch of street over a seven-year period died. So y'all, this is Bob Giordano, my friend who wrote him forever and ever. Bob's fingerprints are on so much of the alternative transportation, bike stuff, all of that sort of thing. If we didn't have Bob, we would have Asians in Missoula, hands down. So we need to move away from that. And I, But I also think the car, and I say this a lot in our bike wall classes here, is an amazing, perhaps the most uh, the most amazing invention ever. I'll just say that all you have to do is push a pedal like this and you go anywhere and you can turn the, the temperature to 71.3 degrees and the music, you choose your own music and your family so how could you say that's terrible? So I think about this a lot. It can be terrible if too much of it's done and it's done thoughtless and for me what one thing that keeps driving me along, no pun intended, biking along is 4,000 people dying every day in this world in car wrecks. And it's hard for me to accept that. I don't accept it. I think that almost everyone can say that they have also lost someone, whether it was like from a car crash or, I don't know, personally, a good friend of mine actually got killed walking, got hit by, it was a hit and run by a drunk driver like three or four years ago. And that's like a personal connection that helps motivate me. He was just like an amazing person. and McDonald and last Sunday at 5.30 a woman was crossing the street and she got hit and died on the scene. It doesn't happen too often in Missoula where a pedestrian gets hit and killed but it happens um, about once a year and that's just way too many for someone to lose a life in public space just crossing a road. Um, I'm gonna ask the police for some information and sometimes they give it out and sometimes they site privacy issues and you can't get any information.
That should never happen. Why, why, why does that happen? And um, a lot of countries are adopting what's called Vision Zero. And Montana actually has it adopted too. So maybe we can like use that policy to help push our state in the right direction. But yeah, just the Vision Zero deaths, zero fatalities um, from the transportation system. It's hard for me to fathom that we don't uh, rise up as a whole world and say enough's enough or let's make a change and let's get bikes going, let's get walking going, let's make the trains beautiful, bus system and drive just a little bit, maybe a tenth of what we're doing today or a hundredth or a millionth. Something's got to give and that's part of why this organization is chugging along and why I'm sticking with it for now.